Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This is our psalm for this coming Sunday. I don't know if we're going to have it as part of the service or not yet, but uh, this is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16, and it is uh, Psalm 31 is one of my favorite psalms. I have quite a bit of it underlined in, in many of my Bibles. I have quite a few Bibles, of course, because that's what you do when you're a pastor. You have a lot of Bibles. Um, but this section here, what we always want to do with the psalms is we read them as prayers, our own prayers. That's, that's how they've been used throughout, all throughout the centuries. They're, they're not just the biographies of someone else, although this is a psalm of David. This is something that he wrote at a time in which uh, he was definitely not having a good day, right? And yet we read these psalms as our own prayers. It's what God has gifted to us in them. But here you read this, and it's for Palm Sunday or, or for the Sunday of the Passion, we'll say, because that's because that's really what we call it in the ELW, Sunday of the Passion. It's a Sunday in which we sit down and we hear the story all over again of what happened to our Jesus, what he did for us because of our sin, and how we are rescued because of what he did. But here you read verses 9 through 13, and I cannot help but think about these words being on the lips of Jesus as he's walking through Jerusalem from where he was convicted and sentenced to death in his way to the cross, where he talks about asking God to be gracious to him, to be kind to him, to be, to be loving to him, knowing that he is in distress, that his body and soul are wasting away because all the burdens of sin are upon him now, the burdens of the cross that he can barely carry himself because the weight of the world's sin is crushing him. And he says, for my life is spent with sorrow and my tears with sighing. That makes me think of the, the verse in Isaiah, I believe it's 53. 52 or 53. I think it's in chapter 53 because we have that little section about the suffering servant in 52 and then almost all of chapter 53 that is the suffering ser servant in it. And it speaks of our Jesus, uh, of this Messiah who has come a as a man of sorrows, who knew pain and grief. And here, for my life is spent in sor with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. You think of all of the pain and the anguish that Jesus goes through there on the cross. How he, how he talks about being the scorn of his adversaries and horror to his neighbors. People who knew him walked by and shook their heads and shook their finger and went, ha, 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 look at him now. He thought he was some hot stuff and look at that. And then I've passed out of mind like one who is dead. I've become like a broken vessel. I read that, and when I read it within the context of Sunday of the Passion, I think of my body broken for you, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. We're having First Communion on Sunday. Uh, normally we do it on Monday, Thursday, but we moved it to, uh, to this coming Sunday so that more people would be able to come. And here we have Jesus. These words, maybe being on his lips at this moment as we follow him through his passion, through his suffering, and knowing that here he's giving us this foretaste of what is to come and what he is doing. But then I love verses 14 
through 16. This was actually a text, I think I've talked about this before in another video, but this is actually a text that I would give to my confirmation students to memorize as part of our work together. They'd usually have a couple of weeks to memorize some scripture. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servants. Save me in your steadfast love. These verses uh, are almost this exclamation of what our confirmation students should be saying when they get confirmed. What they should be saying every single day. Because what should be happening in confirmation is that we move from uh, where we begin with the catechism, which is the beginning of the Ten Commandments, where God declares to us that He is our God, that we have a God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And then we should get here, finally get here, where those young people, as well as ourselves, we are able to declare, yes, you are my God. You are my God, and my life is in your hands. All of my days are in your hands. My times are in your hands. As it says in Daniel, my very breath is in the palm of your hand. That to understand who our God is and to understand that, that almost there's, there's this change of scene here where, where in verses 9 through 13, we, we can picture these words being on the lips of Jesus. And then verses 14 through 16, that the characters switch and we are seeing now Jesus up on the cross in front of us and we down here below and we're looking up at Jesus, up at Jesus on that cross, at, at Jesus there hanging, bruised and broken and dying for you. And we are the ones proclaiming to him, I trust in you. I trust in this one crucified for me. I trust that he is my Lord, the Most High God. I trust and I say, you are my God. I know that my times are in your hands, Jesus, as you are taking the nails in your hands for me. Deliver me. Save me in your steadfast love. Think about that with this, with this psalm. Pray this psalm, maybe, for the remainder of this week. Make it yours. Hold on to it. Taste it. Bring it inside of you as we head towards Holy Week, as we, we know and understand and see what it is that our Christ is doing for us and through us. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, church, tomorrow is the Feast of the Annunciation in which, in which Gabriel comes to Mary and, and announces Jesus. And so tomorrow what I think we're going to do is I'm actually going to uh, have us do a, a morning prayer service using those texts. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to finagle together a, a morning prayer service for this, this video as we uh, inaugurate this day in which we, we celebrate Gabriel telling her that she's going to be having a baby and this baby is going to be this Jesus that we then hear about on Sunday. And it, and it works out well that the Annunciation is happening right before Holy Week because then we're able to connect Christmas and Easter. So uh, I hope to see you tomorrow uh, as, we, as we do gather for that here uh, online and, and pray together. But with that, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.